1950s. It is now 150 years this year that Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species was published. His theory of evolution by natural selection is now scientific orthodoxy, really. But when he unveiled it, it caused a furore. Well, I'm joined now by John Van Wy, a, his, a science historian at the University of Cambridge. And um, by the way, he is at Christ's College there, Darwin's own old college. Uh, John, welcome to the programme. Hi, thank you. Now, talk to me about the on the origin of species. Um, the theory. Nobody has actually sort of improved it as such in 150 years, whereas, whereas Darwin thought really they would, didn't he? Well, I, th- I think it's fair to say that uh, it has been improved on. I mean, the, the reason it? Darwin okay. is celebrated is that the basic framework that he established is still considered to be true. It, he got it right. But science has moved on a lot since his day, and the refinements are... Our legion, they fell libraries. Okay, yeah, sorry, John, but what I meant, I suppose, was that it, it is refinements of a basic theory. Nobody has ever has ever said, listen, what he said isn't right or whatever. Well, that has been claimed uh, a few times by various scientists trying to make a, a good reputation, but uh, no, they've all failed. Uh, it does still stand to this day, yes. Now, what is the fundamental principle of Darwin's theory of natural selection for evolution? What is he saying? Well, what he's saying is all the different kinds of things in the world, they got the way they are by genealogical descent. And the re- the process through which that works, natural selection, works because everything uh, produces so much offspring, like seeds or pollen are good examples. Most of those are destroyed. And if they, wasn't, if they weren't destroyed, any one species would fill the entire earth with its offspring. But that doesn't happen. That hap- it doesn't happen because they're being kept in check because they're being mowed down by predators, disease, famine. So only a tiny minority make it through to survive and pass on uh, their characteristics to another generation. So Darwin thought there must be something special about those that, that tiny minority that make it through the gauntlet. And if they have the right stuff to, to get it through, they'll pass that on to their offspring. And with time, those things can accumulate, and that's how you'll get the formation of new species. Now, the problem, of course, 150 years ago is that Darwin, in essence, was saying um, there wasn't any Adam and Eve. (laughs) Well, uh, let's be clear about this. What we've forgotten nowadays is that Darwin didn't publish his book into a Victorian world of uh, literal biblical creationists. Already before Darwin, uh, it was universally accepted in science that the Earth was very, very ancient, and that the Genesis story in the Bible had to be read in a metaphorical way. They knew that the earth was very ancient. They knew that many different kinds of species have preceded human beings on the earth, uh, from you know, shells and fish and fossils and dinosaurs. That, that was all well known. They knew human beings were a recent uh, addition to, to life on earth. What Darwin did was basically connect the dots of the sciences of his day and, and, and just before him. It wasn't and the case the con- that everyone was still was still clutching to their Bible and believing the world was 6,000 years old. Well, in a sense, uh, John, it, it seems maybe that um, 150 years ago that the world was more welcoming of Darwinian theories than, than perhaps many creationists uh, across North America, for instance, might be. Well, yes and no. Uh, you have to remember that... Uh, 150 years ago uh, this year, there were a lot more creationists in the world than there are today. Uh, although, so Darwin publishes his book, and there's a lot of uh, discussion, but the amazing thing is, that within about 20 years, the debate was over. The international scientific community had almost universally accepted that Darwin was right and evolution is a fact. So that's a remarkable uh, achievement to happen in a context where there's more people with with uh, traditional views. Nowadays, there are, in some countries, small minorities of people with uh, very extreme views about science and, and creation. Uh, I think it's a, it's a shame that they get such a large voice because, I mean, there's, scientifically, there's just no question about it. 
Right. Now, of course, you're the founder and director of Darwin Online, where the complete works of Charles Darwin can be had online. Um, but there, there was a, 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 a suggestion that Darwin had actually kept his theory secret for 20 years. Now, you have a view on that. Yes, yes. I think that uh, that older view is completely wrong. Uh, if you go back and try and find the evidence that Darwin was afraid and didn't want people to know about his theory and that he kept his, uh, his belief in evolution a secret, not only will you not find any uh, evidence that will tell you this, but you'll also find uh, the opposite. You'll find that he told many people, his family, friends, and colleagues, about his belief in evolution and that he was working on a, on a book or a theory on this subject. Uh, so uh, given that this evidence has now been published in an article I wrote a year or two ago, um, I should hope that that uh, story is now, <laughs> now dead and will no longer be repeated. Now, you lecture and broadcast on Darwin around the world, and you're off shortly to North America to continue that. But you've, re you've restored Darwin's rooms at Christ College, and that's going to open shortly, I think. What would people see if they wanted to go there, or, or, or see, and what would they see? Well, it's been a pretty exciting uh, restoration project. We've gone from what was basically an empty shell, just an empty room with, with uh, bare wood paneling. And uh, we've had lots of analysis done to figure out what it looked like in Darwin's day, because there are no pictures or, or sketches. And we found uh, traces of paint on the paneling, so it's all being repainted in the uh, Regency color scheme that Darwin had. And we discovered in the seat cushions, the two bay windows, old, uh, there were layer after layer of cloth cushions on these uh, layers of covers on these cushions and the lowest layer is the right date for Darwin so we've got this uh, beautiful cotton print which could indeed have been Darwin's and we've had it reconstructed and we're using that to make new curtains for the room we're installing antique furniture